Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the 25th episode of My Cluttered Garage. If you've been following along, you'll know that I've produced a lot of videos featuring my Kubota B2601 compact tractor and many of the implements that I purchased with it. We've also done some gardening videos and some general repair videos around the property, including maintenance for my golf cart, some RV updates, and uh, I've also featured some of my favorite tools. I also have a fascinating beekeeper video, and I'll post a link to that one right here. It's by far my favorite video, not necessarily my most popular, but it's my personal favorite. And I'm really not even in that video. Maybe that's why it's not so popular. No, actually my beautiful sister is in it, so it should be more popular than any of my videos. At any rate, I'm glad you're here. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't done so yet, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell and make it turn gray so you're notified when I put out my next video. If you hit the like button, I appreciate that. And join me in the comments where you'll find some great tips from our viewers. Now, today I have a DIY project for the B2601, so stick around. One of the options I bought with the B2601 is the front end loader assembly. And with that, I also bought the third function valve and a grapple. I have the Land Pride SGC 0660 grapple, but there are several other ones that you can choose from from other manufacturers. Regardless, I can tell you that the grapple adds so much functionality to the front end loader. I just, I love it. Now, when my tractor was just about a week old, I was using that grapple to go around the property picking up piles of limbs that had been there for years, hauling them to a burn pile and just having a grand old time. What happened at one point was I went to pick up a pile of limbs. There was about a two inch limb sticking off to the side and when I went to pick it up and rolled it back, that two inch limb came right between this brush bar, scraped the side of my hood, put a small crack in the plastic grill and uh, that was the christening of my tractor. But since then I've seen some videos on YouTube obviously where folks have put some mesh behind this brush bar to protect that from happening. I think it's happened to a lot of people. Generally what I've seen is expanded steel which is a, a mesh and they weld it behind here. I like that a lot but I wanted to try something different. So I ordered something online, some perforated steel. Now this has half inch holes in it and it kind of matches the look of the plastic grill. So I'm going to try to weld this behind the brush bar, see what it looks like. I realize it's a little, uh, little more coverage than the expanded steel, so it's going to block the headlights. But if you know anything about the front end loader on this tractor, if you have the front end loader assembly, the headlights are all but worthless anyway. So. I think some light will get through, but I'm looking forward to trying this project. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the brush bar so that I can do my welding and my preparation on a bench top and not on the tractor itself. Here's a close up of the perforated steel. Now these holes are half inch holes. The steel itself is about 1 16th inch thick. So it's a nice hardy piece of metal. By the way, if you want to try a good tongue twister, try saying land pride grapple five times. Go ahead, I'll wait. Not bad. It's pretty tough though. All right, let's get to work. I'll save you a little bit of time. These bolts are 7 eighths of an inch, so this is a 7 eighths inch socket. I've got a breaker bar here, and I've got an adjustable wrench for the other side. I don't know if there's a metric equivalent to 7 eighths, but I can tell you this fits just fine. Hey Siri, what's the metric equivalent to 7 eighths? Okay, I find this on the web for what's the metric equivalent to seven stroke eight. I don't Check want, it out. No, no, I don't want to look on the web. I just wanted you to tell me the answer. I also have a smaller 3 8 drive with a 7 8 socket because once I break them loose, it makes them easy to remove with this. Did you ever notice there's always one bolt that gives you a hard time? There's always one.
There it is. Now one small challenge is that this brush guard is curved, but this perforated steel is relatively flexible. So I'm thinking I'm gonna be able to put it in place and push it down or clamp it down to hold it in place. Now something else I'm noticing here, where the brush guard bolts to the tractor, this is flexible. You can bend it in and pull it out a little bit, see that? So I don't want to weld a piece of metal on here that will prevent this from flexing or from being at the right dimension to bolt onto the tractor. Imagine if this pulls in and I weld it tight, then I'm not going to be able to open it up. So what I'm going to do is cut a piece of wood the exact width of the front of the tractor. I'm going to place it in between here and either bolt it or clamp it on if I need to. And that will keep the width that I need to ensure that whatever I do, welding anything onto this is going to retain the correct width and measurement that I need. Smart, huh? Huh? Let me just stress the importance of this step. What I thought was a good idea turned out to be a great idea. Cutting this block the width of the tractor frame, which is just a hair under eight and five eighths. So I made the block eight and five eighths, so I'd have a little bit of room. But look at this brush bar. If you can see it in the video, it actually pulled in a good quarter of an inch. If I had welded the mesh onto the back of this, I wouldn't have been able to spread this wide enough to fit into place. So by putting this block in place, now I'm assured that this will fit right over the frame. And just so I don't have to worry about this piece of wood shifting around, I'm gonna throw a screw in there with some washers and that'll just hold it in place. That ought to do it. All right, so I've got the wood blocking in place to keep the dimensions that I need for the brush bar. I feel good about that. I am going to grind the surface of the back of the brush bar so it'll have a nice clean area to weld to. And then I'm gonna lay the mesh on top. And then I'm gonna figure out the next step because I don't know what the next step is. Let's figure it out together. I've got my 20 volt cordless DeWalt mini grinder with my four and a half inch 80 grit flap disc and I'll use that to sand down the edge of the brush guard and of course proper safety gear. All right, I'm gonna try and pre-bend this mesh a little bit just to see if it can fit into place. And we'll clamp it into place to hold it solid. And we'll probably have to tap it into place in certain areas. A little blacksmithing. I'm also keeping the nice factory cut along the bottom because it's a nice finish. It's between two sets of holes. So I want to keep that there. The top piece I'm going to cut off with a, I think with a saber saw and then weld a small piece of angle iron just to give it a little bit of finish. Not bad. That gives me a starting point to put a couple spot welds and then I can finagle it as needed. I'll be using the Hobart 140 handler. It runs on standard household current. I'm using 030 flux core wire and I've been really happy with this little welder.
I'm going to go with a power setting of 2, a feed rate of 30. I've got some of this Hobart nozzle gel to help keep the tip clean. Do you use this stuff? Let me know in the comments what you think about it. I've got these screw clamps, so with these I can get a little more tight than I can with the friction clamps. At least that's what I'm thinking. Looks to be true. Very nice. Oh, seriously? Okay, so here's what I have so far. Not pretty, but it's on the back side, so it won't be seen. Now this piece, I left it hanging over the edge. I'm gonna take a saw and cut that off and then just grind it to get that angle that I need. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Notice I didn't pre-cut anything. I'm gonna clamp it down, weld it into place, and then cut off the overlap with, I think with a jigsaw, um, and then just kind of finish grind it. Okay, now this brush guard is racked a little bit. What I'm finding is if I take this screwdriver and if I can be a bit of a contortionist, I can put a little pressure on this mesh and move it up just enough to bring things back where they want to be. The problem is I need to hold that while welding. Can I do it? I feel like I can, just enough to hold it. Let's try it. I hope this is in the shot. may have done it. Now one problem I have here is this needs to be pushed down tight against the brush guard and I can't put the clamp on here because of all this excess material. So I think I'm going to have to try and cut it where it is and then clamp it. So I'm hoping it doesn't break the weld loose. There's really no other place I can put another spot weld to hold it. But let's try cutting it Let's see what happens. So now I can clamp this down nice and tight. I'll weld along there and then along here, reclamp, and we should be in good shape. Now, the way I'm dealing with welding the thin metal. To the thick metal is I'm basically starting out in the middle of the hole here and letting the thick metal heat up and then I'm either dragging into the thin metal 
to make a little puddle, or I'm pushing into the th thin metal to make a little puddle. But that seems to be working pretty well to start right in the middle of this hole, let things heat up, and then push into the thin metal or pull into the thin metal. Just like that. Okay, now I'm gonna cut off these two corners, cut across the top, we'll add that finished strip, and I think we'll be in good shape. Now to finish off this rough edge where I cut the mesh, I've got this piece of half inch by half inch angle. And we'll just put a piece across here, weld it in, weld it to the back, and it should look great. Just gonna clean up some of these edges with the grinder. I've changed over to the grinding wheel from the flap disc. All right, so here's the half inch angle. I'm gonna hold that into place by hand and just tack it in. Now I'm just gonna clean this up with some sandpaper, my wire brush, wipe it down with some mineral spirits. That's still hot. Let me just be clear, this is not a cheap DIY project. I kind of went all out on this. You can buy the mesh, the uh, expanded metal mesh, I think for like $25. I spent like $50 on this perforated steel. I bought the name brand paint, Rust-Oleum. I've seen better luck with name brand spray paint. So instead of paying $5.99 for a can of unknown, I spent $8.99 for this can. So. Anyway, I'm gonna prime it, gonna paint it, and then we'll put it on and see how it looks. Time for orange. Shout out to all my left-handers since I'm spraying left-handed now. Because my right hand can't take it anymore. All right, we will let that dry and bolt it on. My camera has a bit of an orange film to it now. I didn't realize I was that close to the camera. Bummer. Well, it's the next day and it's raining, but I wanted to show you the finished product. After the paint dried, I was able to bolt everything back into place. Make sure you use that wood blocking because it worked perfectly for holding the size that we needed to put everything back in place. I think it looks great. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to subscribe and uh, hit the like button and watch some of these other videos. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. <laughs>